Welcome to The Fruit of the Spirit is Love, Joy, Peace, Long-Suffering, Kindness, Goodness, Faithfulness, Gentleness, and Self-Control. Against such there is no law. The first is love. This fruit can never perish, but will produce after its kind a harvest unto eternal life. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. If we have the love of Christ in our souls, it will be a natural consequence for us to have all the other graces of joy and peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness and self-control. The law of God does not condemn and hold in bondage those who have these graces because they are obeying the requirements of the law of God. They are law keepers and not under the bondage of the law. We are to have love and connected with this are all the other fruits of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, not hatred, joy, not discontent and mourning. Those who have this spirit are earnest workers together with God. The heavenly intelligences cooperate with them and they are weighted with the spirit of the message that they bear. They speak words of solid sense and from the treasury of the heart bring forth pure, sacred things after the example of Christ. The message that we have to bear is not one that we need to cringe to declare. Its advocates are not to seek to cover it, to conceal its origin and purpose, as those who have made solemn vows to God and who have been commissioned as the messengers of Christ are stewards of the mystery of grace. We are under obligation to declare faithfully the whole counsel of God. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy and peace. Discord and strife cut the work of Satan and the fruit of sin. If we would as a people enjoy peace and love, we must put away our sins. We must come into harmony with God and we shall be in harmony with one another. Talents, learning and eloquence. Without this heavenly attribute, will be as meaningless as sounding brass or tinkling cymbals. Alas, that this precious treasure is so lightly valued and so little sought by many who profess the faith. If we would not build our hopes of heaven upon a false foundation, we must accept the Bible as it reads and believe that the Lord means what he says. He requires nothing of us that he will not give us grace to perform. We shall have no excuse to offer in the day of God if we fail to reach the standard set before us in his word. We are to grow daily in spiritual loveliness. We shall fail often in our efforts to occupy the, and copy the divine pattern. We shall often have to bow down to weep at the feet of Jesus because of our shortcomings and mistakes. But we are not to be discouraged. We are to pray more fervently, believe more fully and try again with more firmness of purpose to grow into the likeness of our Lord. As we distrust our own power, we shall trust the power of our Redeemer and render praise to God who is the health of our countenance and our God by constantly looking to and patterning after Christ as our personal Saviour we shall grow up into him in all things our faith will grow our conscience will be sanctified we will more and more become like Christ in our works and words thank God we shall believe his word and the fruit of the spirit is love 
joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. There is nothing but divine power can regenerate the human heart to imbue souls with the love of Christ, which will ever manifest itself with the love of those for whom he died. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. When a man is converted to God, a new moral taste is supplied, a new motive power is given, and he loves the things that God loves. For his life is bound up by the golden chain of the immutable promises to the life of Christ. David declared, Thy gentleness hath made me great. In Psalms 18.35 But those who are waiting to behold a magical change in their characters without determined effort on their part to overcome sin will be disappointed. We have no reason to fear while looking to Jesus, no reason to doubt, but that he is able to save to the uttermost all that come unto him. In coming to Christ, there must be an exercise of faith. We need to bring him into our day, everyday life, our daily life then we shall have peace and joy and we shall know by experience the meaning of his word if you keep my commandments you shall abide in my love our faith must claim the promise that we may be able in the love of Jesus that we may abide in the love of Jesus Faith works by love and purifies the soul. Through faith, the Holy Spirit finds access to the heart and creates holiness within. Man cannot become an agent to work the works of Christ unless he is in communion with God through the Holy Spirit. We can be fitted for heaven only through the transformation of character. We must have Christ's righteousness as our credentials. We must daily be transformed by the influence of the Holy Spirit, for it is the work of the Holy Spirit to elevate the taste, to sanctify the heart, to ennoble the whole man by presenting to the soul the matchless charms of Jesus. with all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love. I invite you to the look to the man of Calvary. Look to him whose head was crowned with the crown of thorns, who bore the cross of shame, who went step by step down the path of humiliation. Day by day, let us sit at the feet of Jesus and learn of him, that in our conversation, our conduct, our dress, and in all our affairs, we may reveal the fact that Jesus is ruling and reigning over us. God calls upon us to walk in a path that has been cast up for the ransomed of the Lord. We are not to walk after the world. We are to surrender all to God and confess Christ before men. Oh, that the baptism of the Holy Spirit might come upon you. Then you will become more and more conformed to the image of Christ. Ungovernable passion will not be subdued in a moment. But your life work is before you to rid the garden of the heart of the poisonous weeds of impatience, fault finding and an overbearing disposition. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness and temperance. 
They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with its affections and lusts. But your base nature takes the lines of control and guides the spiritual. This is God's order reversed. You should control the appetite and in the name of Jesus be a conqueror on this point. Your health may improve with correct habits. The great physician can heal your body as well as your soul. Make his power your dependence. His grace your strength. And make your physical, moral and spiritual powers will be greatly improved. Make a decided change at once and be determined that you will act a part worthy of the intellect with which God has endowed you. Sin can only be resisted and overcome through the mighty agency of the third person of the Godhead who would come with no modified energy but in the fullness of divine power. And didn't we see that at Pentecost? It is the Spirit that makes effectual what has been wrought out by the world's Redeemer. It is by the Spirit that the heart is made pure. Through the Spirit, the believer becomes a partaker of the divine nature. Christ has given His Spirit as a divine power to overcome all hereditary and cultivated tendencies to evil and to impress His own character upon His church. When the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. Christ is waiting with longing desire for the manifestation of himself in his church. When the character of Christ is perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim them as his own. It's the privilege of every Christian, not only to look for, but to hasten the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Were all who profess his name bearing fruit to his glory, how quickly the whole world would be sown with the seed of the gospel. Quickly the last great harvest would be ripened, and Christ would come to gather the precious grain. Oh, may God bless you, friend.